the scene. I have great difficulty because this is in a Torrens. It's not a lot block type scenario. When you get over there, those buildings two over have lot and block. It's just so much easier in a legal sense when you have a platted parcel. This is abstract, so everything has to get put in an E. Well, an abstract quote to be the titles. And it, it got messed up a lot. But what Annie did was she sold part of this to her daughter. On the back of the building, there was a section that got split off, and that became the schoolhouse. In some of those photos, you'll see behind this building, there's a building. And behind that building, there's a building. And it was, a, it was used for a school. And I think when you look in there, there's some photos of where all those kids were at in the, in the schoolhouse. So I think Annie was kind of a fixture in town. Um, Frank Sokup, I think he was, or was it, or was it her husband, Joseph, I think was the first postmaster in town. And so there's a picture where like all the postmasters are lined up. So this, I know that Scott County would like this building to be on the register of historical places just because of the people who owned it and what they did. Um, Annie Rayback, according to Scott County, has relations with um, the M. Ryback. So the Ryback, she's so like, yep, related to mayor at the time, it was R.T. Ryback. So I think Annie was kind of a forerunner um, of, of in her time. So um, she did a lot of really great things leading the, the way for you know, women to get involved in things. And so we have a lot of people who, I think it went from her to her son, Thomas, 
it went to Nicolay, um, and then it ended up in uh, Tom Topka. I, I think Tom was more in that building because that's the top of the building. Um, so like I said, it's kind of hard to figure it all out who exactly the chain of title belongs to, but it ended up going to Malika. So Leo and get her name, the Malakas. And so they owned it for a very long time, and then it went um, from the whatever to the 90s. All the deeds are listed. It was a, uh, it's messy. I just, you know, like if you are into that sort of thing, it's all there. Dig in, you can always go to Scott County. They can't tell you a lot over the phone, so you kind of have to go in and books are this big and it's like the Harry Potter books or whatever they're huge the writing is beautiful um, but what's kind of interesting is when New Craig started it was Opal and then it went to Praha and then it went to the village of Praha and then it went to Prague and then city of New Craig so what's weird is some of the legal documents got filed in Lesseur County. I don't know why. So some of them were filed in Lesseur, but most ended up back here in Scott County. But um, the, the building has really strong historical roots, um, and I think a lot of people probably have relatives or, you know, family friends that were um, patrons. Obviously, a lot of bowlers. I think that's why a lot of you guys are here, the strong connection to bowling. But these buildings create memories for us as a town and pulls us together collectively in what we call a community. And I think that's the beautiful thing about having structures like this, that we're, we're all doing our part to take care of you know, these buildings because it really is your roots and your history. But I think it's time, I, the building is currently for sale. It's time for somebody who is more connected and has their finger on the pulse of the town and what's good for the town. And my kids went to school here and they're all kinda up. So I, it's, it's time to hand the torch to the next people who you know, may wanna do something with the building. Um, I did check into Brunswick um, there is a photo of an actual operating bowling alley with the same equipment. It's in Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana. If you're ever there, you can bowl there if you want. Um, but it's vintage 1928. However, I have a photo over there I cannot explain because this building has bowling alley and in the street are horses and carts. I can't explain that. I don't know when this bowling alley actually went in. So if anybody has any information on that, that'd be a uh, mystery solved. Um, the last we saw on the door, the bowling alley was closed in the 60s. I want to say 67-ish. I can't confirm. I don't know. Um, but it, it was your bowling alley, and I, I, that's all I have on it. Um, but it's it's a great historical piece for the town. So, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Thompson. Was this a bowling alley before your father took it over? So it was already a bowling alley when your dad stepped in. So we just don't know how far back it goes. Correct. We, I don't know. But so it's kind of a mystery. Like, I think everybody by the 1910 plus probably had cars, right? Yeah, I don't know. Do so there's a photo of 1925, and there are cars. But yeah. the other one, I cannot explain. But there, and there's a, there was a female bowling league. So ladies had a bowling league. If you know anybody, please let the historical society know. They, they want to put names on those faces. Um, but if you have stories, please share them. Um, at the New Prague Historical Society's website. Or you can write them down here from here. This yeah. Is, this is where it has the horses, and then it says bowling down here. Yeah. So, and, the, and, and it looks 
Unless somebody AI that in there, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so thank you for your interest uh, in the building, uh, your building. So while this bowling alley is open, there's like a variety store downstairs. Down there. They were skinny then. <laughs> they were little guys. Yeah. But then wouldn't they jump over into the next section when the pins started falling? No, they stayed between. He said there was two alleys and okay. you stood between and then those two alleys the guys stood between. Got it. So they took care of two alleys. Two, two, two okay, like got it. One pin center. Oh, it would be so cool to just see how it all operates. This is going to just bring you to the... Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I've got a few different stories to tell, but... Uh, I'm going to have you hold that. We had a uh, senior skip day in 1953, and uh, the fellows wanted to, wanted to uh, find something to do on the skip day, and I, uh, I just let them know that I had a key to the bowling alley so we could do, we could go up there and play tool, pool. Well, this used to be a door to the, the bar and uh, then there was steps that came up right underneath just out, you know, on that side of the door. And uh, then there was two pool, two pool tables over here and uh, we were up there playing pool uh, until the phone rang. And it was Mr. McDonald. He was principal of the high school. And he was, he wanted to know who he was talking with. Well, I didn't want to tell him I was Ken Thompson and it's skipping school. So I told him I was Tom Thompson. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, I'm not too sure that he actually believed me because he was not only principal, he was uh, the coach of the football team. And a whole lot of the guys that I was with, maybe almost all of them, uh, were football players. So anyway, I think I was nabbed 
but not. Yeah, I've always had the feeling that it wasn't because I mean I didn't get scolded by anybody, but I think that might have had to do with that. If he was going to raise heck with me, he'd have to raise heck with his own his football team too. So anyway, that was uh, that's the story that I. I choose to tell you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I don't think uh, McDonald is around anymore, so no. I'm probably <laughs> safe. <in the> <laughs> so anyway, that then we we sat pins and uh, you know I don't even tell me. Do you remember where we? We walked down on that side, didn't we? Well, either side. That the fence? Fence. What? You usually walk down the gutters too. I mean, the return right down the middle. Yeah. Well. You actually walked down. You walked down the gutter and then you crawled underneath the center and <laughs> yeah. up and yeah. Yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was interesting, and I, I, I. Uh, Moved to Loop Break when I was a uh, freshman in high school, and here they call it a sophomore. So uh, then I, I I was in the Marine Corps uh, before I graduated for from uh, high school. There was a recruiter that showed up and and uh, talked with a lot of the boys from. From uh, New Prague at high school, at high school, I wasn't interested in it at that time. Yeah, I got but that's the one you took uh, some of the boys, my classmates, yeah, uh, that had to uh, 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 listen to the recruiter, uh, they were going to go down to Fort Snelling and uh, uh, just view the stuff and get a little more talk. So. I just went along with them. I uh, thought I might as well learn something. Well, I, I think I was the only one of the group that went down that actually joined uh, on the day we went down. But I did go into boot camp and was in boot camp with uh, at least other four, four other New Freak people. Maybe it might have been five, I don't know. But, uh, that was kind of fun. My dad was uh, a very good bowler. He bowled one series of two, uh, 709, and that was uh, uh, before the alleys uh, started getting siped. And uh, the scores went up a lot. Is this so there are probably a, you know, quite a few people that have 700 series now. But at that time, they were very I don't know. I think that might be about all I can tell you. So this was also a picture from him. Yes. Thompson. Okay. And this is his oldest son, Bernard, who's no longer with us. Okay. But um, yeah, so that would be right here. He this he this is Tom. He also set pins here. Awesome. And that your dad owned it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. From 1950, we came down here. Okay. And so my dad died in 59. Nine. So you you bought it as a boy? I mean, wait, not, he, he, he was 59 years old when he died. Oh, I see. Okay. And so when you guys moved here, it was because you bought the bowling alley? It was what? Did you move here because you bought the bowling alley? Yeah, that's right. Okay. He was always in the bowling He lived here in Minot, North Dakota. He came down here. He looked at a couple of different bowling alleys. And he kind of liked this area here. So. Yeah. And we used to get 25 cents a line to bowl, and the pin sitter got 10 cents out of that. Yeah. Oh. So, 
Twenty-five cents for like how long? For one game. Two. Bad. Right. Okay. Alright, okay. Uh, okay. Behind so my dad. All right, we here. He was one of the pin setters. So do you want to tell us what that was like? <laughs> I can't do it. You can, can't you? Oh, can you whistle? We've got a pin setter. Mr. Johannes. You could talk to anybody else but me, but the other ones are all dead. <laughs> It was, well, I, at that time, it's, nothing was dangerous. <laughs> it really wasn't, but it was, it was hard. You had pins flying around and people hollering at you. And I, I didn't do it a lot. We were farmers, so I, was, I did it on the weekend a few times, but not a whole lot. But it was... The, John and Jack Swanovitz, remember them? Swanovitz? Swanovitz. They're, they're as old as I am. So they're 84, 83, but you're a lot, you probably don't remember them. They were out of school. They graduated when I graduated in 58. Oh, okay. So you're a bunch older than I am. What years were you in cities? I would probably have been 57, 58. Okay, and that, Tommy would have been around here at that time. But I was in the Marine Corps. Oh, right. At that time. But I did the same thing as you. They came to the. I did the same thing as you did. I went to. They came to school. The Army did, for recruiting, and I was in. I was in the Army before I graduated. Oh my. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like I was in the Marine Corps before I. Right. Graduated. That was a thing at that time. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you. One owner for that, and one owner for that. Right, and that. that's where the yeah, I know. bottom came in because, because he decided so that he grabbed right. his. I don't really the meeting dress, but they're not fine with me as well. So, you know, I have no idea going with it. It's a contract for yeah, me. Randy Sawyer is the one who owns it, and it's a contract for me. Wait a minute, Randy Sawyer is not Randy Sawyer? He's organized. Yeah. He's but she's over foot. He's 16. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Randy, I used to have a class named Randy. He yeah. passed, yeah. but he has a oh, son Randy. Oh, 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 he has a son Randy. Sawyer? Is it Sawyer? Are you doing anything cool? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That is so cool. Oh, well, look at you. Why doesn't somebody hold a picture of Grandpa? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. All the Thompsons in France. You guys can get the front because you guys weren't here.
taken in Minneapolis. We lived in my and he came to Minneapolis. Okay, okay. thank you. Come on over here. Okay. Can I get a bowling bag? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the which bag? Do you want to hold Grandpa? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, this is great. Okay, I'm going to talk to So for those who have just walked in, this is the Thompson family. And their grandfather and father was and grandmother were the ones that owned this bowling alley. We're gonna All get right. it. Well, I'm gonna take a few of them. One, two, three. Two, one more I can see a bowling. You gotta go one, two, three, strike. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Where did Mary Lean go? Do you want it right here? Okay, thank you. 